While perusing the many perplexing sites we are yet to cover on our channel, we stumbled across something which could quite possibly be a massive clue – evidence left as to the method of construction of many ancient sites found all over Earth. Our channel has, for a long time, put forward the hypothesis that a highly advanced worldwide civilization once flourished here on our planet. We believe that many of the ancient sites which display unexplained architecture were left by this lost people, placed far within our distant past. And once one begins to investigate these ruins with this possibility in mind, you start to notice some compelling things regarding these amazing sites. For example, the metal clamps we have previously covered, often created using impressive mixes of alloys and somehow poured molten, could now be seen as earlier architectural examples less than the mortarless, mysteriously notched stonework, also found in similar areas all over the world, with the more precise and thus more impressive stonework seen as a later, more sophisticated method of construction. What's more, although virtually all ancient sites have been dated to the most convenient suspects within known taught history, there also exists the numerous caves and temples, hewn from the solid bedrocks, carved with such accuracy and vision, they elude recreation even by our modern-day technology. And while looking at an amazing rock-cut cave within the site of Mamalapuram, India, a site we are now convinced was left by this same civilization, a curious piece of evidence seemingly presented itself. Upon the roughly finished roof of this ancient cave is evidence left by the same technology used to not only cut the astonishingly huge Longyu Caves, but also the abandoned Langshan Quarry, both in China. This discovery, we believe, is only just the beginning of a realization that these telltale signatures are present at many other unexplained sites around the world. We have long stipulated that many of the ancient ruins claimed by our more modern-day ancestors are most likely not their actual creations. If the structure does date to this more recent age, they are usually found to be sitting upon the telltale remnants of a highly precise ancient foundation originally left by this elusive group. Who were these amazing people? When did they flourish here on Earth? What happened to them? Why did they never record how they created such wonders? Although it is easy for skeptics to argue that the caves and architecture were merely created through excruciating hard labor, any practical demonstration of this has eluded us for many centuries. Furthermore, Many of the extensive cave excavations found all over the world, presumably dating back to this bygone age, are all absent any waste, as if the machine tasked with creating these underground labyrinths turned stone to dust. And although the technology and or possible machinery tasked with the job has evaded modern archaeology to this point, it is clearly another piece of evidence which takes us one step closer to unraveling the true history of our planet. Many things have happened to our planet during its long and arduous journey through the cosmos to where we find ourselves in the present. Many incredible and sometimes destructive events which we, as a species, are yet to unravel. Many of these mysterious events have thankfully left their marks upon the Earth in many ways, upon many of the oldest of artifacts and geology to be found on every continent. Clues left by these clearly cataclysmic events that many attribute to natural causes. However, there does exist many mysterious anomalies. Vitrified forts, melted stairways, deserts turned to glass. Areas in remote places where events have occurred and can no longer sustain substantial life, leaving a landscape barren and scarred. Although we feel our next item of focus is probably one of the lesser mentioned of the anomalies, which shows a dramatic history here on our planet, but is probably one of the most compelling and little understood of them all. Known as the Devonian concretions, not much is understood regarding these mysterious cannonball-shaped stones, exhibiting a rusty patina, 
many to speculate that they were once of a metallic composition. Often mistaken for fossil eggs, turtle shells, or bones, they are a very common geologic phenomenon in all types of sedimentary rock all over the Earth. We have covered a number of mysterious and as yet unexplained artifacts that were seemingly abandoned in many areas of the world around 300 to 350 million years ago. Interestingly, this is the dating given to the sudden arrival for many of these mysterious and often perfectly spherical so-called concretions. Did something happen at this time in history involving these fossilized, metallic, possible cannonballs? Many of the concretions that are found in the open on hard ground are more oval in shape, as if warped upon impact with the Earth. Yet the spheres that are found embedded within layers of soft sediments are more often than not perfectly spherical. The most perfectly preserved spheres are often those found within these softest sediments, most notably those found in Bosnia, Mexico, and Costa Rica, found in sandstone plateaus, including a few spectacularly intact specimens found in soft shale faults within Ohio, USA. How were these amazing spheres formed? If geological, then how did they form in so many different areas of Earth, in so many different types of sediment, solid rock, and on open ground, and show, in many cases, the appearance that they were actually once lodged where they are found? rather than to have grown there through unknown natural processes. We always find geologists and academics passionate denial of any other possibility than the predictably rigid supported limited list of universal possibilities, which will only ever accept natural processes, though, thankfully, many are beginning to consider a more logical reality surrounding many of these amazing artifacts. Tokyo's Imperial Palace Home of the Japanese Emperor and a place which holds many secrets. Some it seems hidden in plain sight for countless centuries. For many years people have visited this marvelous building, and the perfectly kept grounds it is placed within. What is interesting regarding its historical history is the fact that much of it is hidden and yet to be told. The oldest historical accounts for the palace date back to 1457 AD when a great warrior known as Ido Shigetsugu built the castle Ido on the site. Ido's clan would perish in the 15th century as a result of uprisings in the Kanto and Ota Dokan regions of Japan. However, what is interesting regarding the palace's construction is its foundations, including the exterior wall, which many now believe was already in existence before the castle's construction, and also the reason the site was chosen all those years ago by the warrior Ido himself. The construction techniques visible in the original construction are clearly evidence of highly advanced building techniques, completed by a clearly highly advanced civilization. And these methods used within the foundations were not replicated throughout the more recent structure, as if forgotten between builds. Additionally, a piece of artifactual evidence was recently covered, a highly compelling building technique which unquestionably links many ancient sites to one another found all over the world, showing an intercontinental sharing of building knowledge many millennia ago. Known as the missing metal clamps, their carved seats still present upon many of the most ancient stonework at the palace, eroded away metal clamps used to keep the stones firmly in place as they settled over the following years after construction. Present at countless sites across the world, a technique somehow shared worldwide only differing from country to country in their process of manufacture. The evidence to suggest that the Palace of Japan is in fact built upon a far older and possibly once far more spectacular structure seems overwhelming. Yet questions remain, most obvious of which, who built the structure to begin with? When did they build it? And what was its purpose? Thankfully, the more we understand regarding the perplexing techniques used by this elusive, yet clearly once highly advanced civilization, the more of these ruins we are seemingly spotting, allowing for their study and subsequent preservation before lost forever. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care.
We recently covered the astonishing archaeological discoveries located within the modern-day Turkey. We discussed the unexplained ancient ruins of Gobleki Tepe, clearly a remnant of a far more ancient, far more advanced civilization than academia would ever allow contemplation of. Additionally, and the focus of the last video, the other ancient gem known as Norsen Tepe, a highly complex, thus highly advanced, ancient temple, whose contents indicated no less than 40 additional re-inhabitations of the structure after the original construction, now conveniently hidden under several meters of water, submerged during a dam-building operation. Why this operation was undertaken, or indeed why this site in particular was chosen for flooding, may become apparent with our next place of interest. It seems that some of the sites within Turkey have revealed some extremely well-preserved, extremely ancient artifacts, left by numerous as yet unknown civilizations. And although these finds have seemingly been concealed from mankind, fate is seemingly on our side. Ironically, a site of complete opposite characteristics, having not been touched or re-inhabited for untold millennia, has also been unearthed within Turkey. A Lachahoyuk, a site on the surface perceived to have been a primitive archaeological ruin dating back to 2350 to 2150 BC, over 4,000 years ago. And yet, upon deeper exploration, an analysis seemingly undertaken too late for academia's dating has shown that the site possesses evidence of the same lost technology or more specifically, advanced knowledge of stone construction found at many other ancient, unexplained sites around the Earth, like Saxahuaman, a site we also covered previously. It must be clear to everyone that academia's dating of these sites is not accidental. Was the dating too hastily concluded? We would assume that a dating of over 4,000 years is now difficult to accompany with such advanced knowledge of stone carving and construction. Just how old is a Lachahoyuk? And the same question as always, based on the unexplainable knowledge involved in its creation, who could have built it?